Hello guys, welcome to another little update video and this time from unfamiliar surroundings. That's because I'm in Berlin right now and not in my own workshop in Cologne. And this is uh, the workshop of a couple of friends of mine who founded a company about five years ago here in Berlin and they do electronic as well as mechanical stuff. They basically develop prototypes or products for customers and some pretty out there stuff as well and we'll have a look around here in this uh, a very interesting lab slash workshop in just a minute. Uh, first of all let me explain a little bit what I'm doing here. Uh, if you've been following my channel for a while you know that I mostly work alone and well I'm a little bit isolated at the moment with my work in Cologne so I called my friend Felix. We've known each other for about maybe nine years or something and for the last five years or so he's been working with his old um, well really more or less a childhood friend uh, Tristan and they founded a company here in Berlin and uh, I just thought I'd bring my own stuff with me some of my electric motor test stand equipment is in the other corner of this room and I've been working on that alongside the other guys uh, for the last couple of days and then in the evening hours we visited like other companies other workshops around town also stuff like uh, co-working spaces because in case you didn't know Berlin is quite well known for having this vibrant startup culture a lot of people are trying to create their own products putting them out there and there are also a lot of like makers here in Berlin so I was kind of on um, on a mission to explore that a little bit and I'll make a video, a little documentary um, where you will learn about this place here, about the history um, of this company and how they make products and then we will visit other guys who are doing similar stuff and that's all very interesting and I think uh, it'll be online in like uh, one or two weeks. So it's a Saturday afternoon and I'm alone in here so let's use that to take a look around then. And you'll notice right away that this looks more like a hobbyist shop at first glance than part of a commercial enterprise. And that's because it that's really where it started I guess. Tristan is one of those guys just like me basically who started as an electronics hobbyist when he was just a child and I think he also collected parts for his entire life because you can find so many salvage parts from VCRs and printers in here but believe it or not some of these are actually used to develop commercial products and this is really in a way a dream come true imagine two guys childhood friends both like uh, enthusiasts for technology electronics and mechanical stuff and they can actually make it they can actually have their own company and do what they like and make money with it. So over here we have the electronics lab and what we can see here is part of a DC power supply, a 50 volt rail I guess for a new CNC milling machine that we will take a look at in just a second and well they choose to do this the old-fashioned way and bought this massive transformer here and Tristan was working on this massive capacitor bank. And then we have like little bits and pieces of a thousand different projects I guess and I can't say too much about that because um, Tristan's not here and I don't know what he's been up to there. But I know that he's also working sometimes in his off time on high voltage projects. That looks very much like a high voltage generator. And well, this one like here looks like uh, some kind of oscillator. We've been talking about that lately. So he's also working on some hobby projects here alongside the actual commercial stuff. But these guys are not just into electronics, but they are very much into mechanical stuff and rapid prototyping and that kind of stuff. So they, of course they have a 3D printer. And I have not much experience with that because I'm very old-fashioned as you know. But I've heard a lot of good about this Creator Pro here. Maybe I can give you some samples later on. Now here's some of my stuff that I brought with me from Cologne. And that's really what I've been working on over the past two weeks. Some of you might remember that well about a year ago I started to buy or collect parts of an electric motor test stand 
And what I showed you back then was this curious looking part here. That's a magnetic powder brake. And it's part of a test stand where different types of electric motors, like this universal motor here, can be attached to the brake. And then a adjustable torque can be applied to the motor. And that can be controlled with these brake control units here. I have two of them over here. And then you can read out the torque applied and the motor speed. But, well, back then I bought a lot of parts, I unboxed them in front of the camera, but then I learned that, for example, the pinouts, the pinouts of these connectors didn't even fit into the control units. They were from the same company, but slightly different. So there was the first problem. So over the course of the last year, I then bought a lot more parts from that same company. I all found that on eBay another magnetic powder brake and this time it had the right pin out and fit to the machine and then I bought more motors I have now I guess eight or nine in total all working on different physical principles and of course you might think that it's very old-fashioned stuff and what do I want to do with it well the idea is really to have a electric motor test and running so that I can demonstrate the behaviors of the different motor types like this universal motor in comparison to, for example, this induction motor here. But the long-term goal really is to build a lab environment that I can use to develop motor control or speed control circuits under, well, lab conditions. And that is why I have tried to reverse engineer one of these brake control units. Um, it looks easy enough at first glance because this just looks like some very primitive 1970s electronics but there are actually a lot of op, op amps on there and a lot of analog regulation is going on and it took me about 25 hours this week to figure out how it works on a circuit level and I'm well about 85 percent done with that so once I really understand how it works I will hopefully be able to <laughs> repair the brake units see I have three identical units I bought three because well, in the hope that at least one of them would work, but they're all broken. So that was, that's what's going to happen in the next days. I'll try to get at least one running. Then I can use these brakes and the machines to make tutorial videos about these motors. But as I said, I want, actually want to use it for motor control circuit development. And another cool thing that would be possible, I guess, is to use the test stand to, to, to test salvaged motors or even like motors like this um, BLDC here, it could be possible to just mechanically adapt these modern motors to the old brakes and then ha have them tested. And that's really one of, the, one of the things that really could pay off over the long term. And well, here you can see a little bit, of course, the um, difference uh, in the kind of stuff that I've been working on recently and what they've been working on here while my stuff is like 40 years old. This is like cutting edge stuff, at least um, in terms of affordable electronics. And believe it or not, while this motor here maybe can have a power output of 200, maybe 300 watts, it might get very hot then. This little BLDC here might have like a power rating of up to one kilo uh, watts or something like that. And here we have this tiny um, BLDC controller. I think it's called the VESC. That's for, I think, VEDA electronic speed controller. You can look that up online. I don't know how, mu how much it costs, but as far as I know, each of these three MOSFETs here is rated for an average current of 100 amps or something really kind of crazy So these guys are working a lot at the moment with um, high-powered BLDCs and really very modern stepper and BLDC control electronics and That's something that I also want to get into So you'll hear much more about this stuff in the next couple of regular episodes once we're back in Cologne while we're here Let's explore what these guys are doing here and you can see that um, They're into milling. They had this CNC uh, milling machine installed on the wall over there um, Until a couple of days ago when we took it down and you'll see why in just a second 
Over here we have a universal type manual milling machine and that's probably one of the things that I should get for my workshop pretty soon because that's extremely useful and not all that expensive. Um, a whole different price tag though on this machine over here. This is a newly built CNC milling machine and it was custom made I guess for these guys and well they had to work uh, five years to get to this point and uh, quite the milestone in the history of this young company I guess. This uh, unit is weighing around 250 kilograms. This is made from some kind of compound material. I first thought that this is uh, cast iron but it's not. The spindle is still missing and I think that they went for a system um, where you can just snap in or inst uh, quickly exchange different kinds of spindles. It's directly powered by servo motors but the motor controller is not yet installed of course. By the way another neat thing here in Berlin this steel frame was also custom made by friends of them so well lots of startup companies here the guys know, it, know each other so sometimes they help each other out I guess and of course we still need a door for protection and whatnot and it's really kinda kinda sad that I'm not uh, able to show you this machine running it'll be a couple of more weeks I guess before they can get to that point and over here an old lathe a mechanics lathe that Tristan got from his father I guess it's a 1960s um, lathe but Tristan also made some pretty cool upgrades and that's actually one of the reasons why I came here in the first place one neat thing for example he built this mechanical rotary encoder here to measure the motor speed and down here we have this asynchronous uh, three uh, phase motor that's hooked up to a variable frequency drive but I can't see it at the moment but one thing that's actually even better I guess um, while the old cross slide here is installed at the moment they actually developed a CNC cross slide that can be just uh, adapted to any old machine and then you can do CNC machining on a 1960s lathe. Pretty cool thing I hope that I can adapt the plans to my lathe and that will then in the future be able to convert that one as well. Okay guys so that was just a quick walk around here but uh, soon there will be a properly edited documentary about my trip to Berlin here. I'll tell you much more about this place about the project that these guys are working on and how they also made the transition I guess from enthusiasts to professionals and we'll also peek in other workshops and other people who are trying to live that same dream and I think that will be very interesting. Up to that point I'll upload some update pictures on Facebook and Patreon and if you want to follow that then check those links out in the video description. See you soon.